รายการต่อไปนี้เป็นรายการทั่วไปสามารถรับชมได้ทุกวัยสนับสนุนโดยยูโรเค้กอร่อยทุกที่ทุกเวลาพรีเมียมเอาท์เลตแฟคทอรี่เอาท์เลตของแบรนด์เนมระดับพรีเมียมโดเน่ป๊อบบีนเขียวมันหอมอร่อยปี1998ริชาร์ดหลิวหรือหลิวเฉียงตงเปิดร้านขายแผ่นดิสเครื่องใช้ไฟฟ้ามือถือและคอมพิวเตอร์ในนามบริษัทจิงดงปี2003เกิดการแพร่ระบาดของโรคซาร์สในประเทศจีนพนักงานทุกคนต้องอยู่บ้านปี2005ริชาร์ดหลิวตัดสินใจปิดหน้าร้านทั้งหมดที่มีอยู่12สาขาหันมาลุยออนไลน์เพียงช่องทางเดียวและนี่คือจุดกำเนิดของ JD.com บริษัทอีคอมเมิร์ซรายใหญ่ที่สุดในประเทศจีน JD เข้าตลาดหุ้น NASDAQ เมื่อปี2014โดยเป็นธุรกิจอีคอมเมิร์ซในจีนรายแรกที่เข้าตลาดหุ้นในนิวยอร์กจากการถแถลงผลประกอบการล่าสุดของ JD.com รายได้สุทธิอยู่ที่ 1.16 หมื่นล้านเหรียญสหรัฐเฉพาะในไตรมาสที่4ของปี2016ซึ่งถ้าเทียบกันแบบไตรมาสต่อไตรมาสแล้วรายได้ของ JD.com ในปี2016มากกว่าปี2015ถึง 58% ส่วนรายได้ทั้งปี2016อยู่ที่ 3.75 หมื่นล้านเหรียญสหรัฐ JD เป็นบริษัทที่ใส่ใจระบบ Customer Experience โดยการพัฒนาระบบ Logistics และ Supply Chain ด้วยแนวคิด Last Mile Delivery เพื่อให้สินค้าอยู่ใกล้กับผู้บริโภคมากที่สุดและการนำเสนอประสบการณ์การช้อปปิ้งออนไลน์ที่ดีที่สุดให้แก่ลูกค้าผ่านทางเว็บไซต์และแอปพลิเคชันที่ใช้งานง่ายศูนย์จัดการคลังสินค้าที่ใหญ่ที่สุดประสบการณ์19ปีของ JD.com โลกอนาคตอันใกล้กับร้านค้าปลีกออนไลน์ใหญ่ที่สุดของจีนที่กำลังจะเกิดขึ้นในประเทศไทยริชาร์ดหลิว Yeah, we will bring our e-commerce business to Thailand. We will bring our the best and the new technology to Thailand. กับสุดที่ใช้ยุนผู้ร่วมก่อตั้ง c r e a t i o n ครั้งแรกในเมืองไทยของ Richard l i เจ้าของอาณาจักร e-commerce แสนล้านบาทเบื้องหลังความสำเร็จอันรวดเร็วของ JD.com ทอล์กโชว์ของผู้นำตลาด e-commerce ยักษ์ใหญ่จากจีน Richard Liu in Bangkok, which is the most famous one. In and now, ladies and gentlemen, the long-awaited live show can now begin. Let's welcome the host, Mr. Suthichai Yun, co-founder of the Nation Group of Thailand. Good afternoon. When he was a boy, he wanted to be a politician, so he studied sociology. He came from a poor village, from a poor family, called s u c h i a n Prefecture in Jiangsu Province. The parents were poor. He was doing farming, but he was very ambitious, and he was very clever. He managed to pass the exam to enter the People's University in Beijing. So when he left his little village to go to the capital, relatives had to give him money. Those. Who did not have money gave him eggs, so that he would not starve in Beijing. He went on to study sociology. Easy for him. 
So he had a lot of free time. He started to learn computer programming. At that time, very few people in China knew computer programming. So this young man, 17 years old perhaps, was doing extra job, part-time job, by doing computer programming, making good money. He first bought his mobile phone, which was like a big piece of rock. It cost him 4,000 US dollars. Then he started to think he should do business, even at the age of about 18. He started a restaurant in front of the entrance of the university. The restaurant went bankrupt in eight months. He said later that the restaurant went bankrupt because the cashier and the chef fell in love with each other. And they started to work out ways to steal money from the company. Before long, the rest of the staff started to steal money from his company too. But then he said it's his fault because he had no management skills. He was never there. So that was a great lesson. He decided after he graduated that he would learn some management skills. So he joined a Japanese company where he learned management skills, logistics, everything. He was then about 20. For two years, he worked very hard. And he earned enough money where he thought he could start his business again. This time, he would not repeat his mistake. He would be there. He would work hard. He went to rent a small about square, four square meters of space as a counter in the electronics market in Beijing and started selling computer components. Very soon, his business started to expand. At one point, he even had 12 branches. He was then 24. Then, when he was 29, in 1998, disaster struck. SARS broke out in China. Beijing became a ghost town because nobody wanted to leave home. So this young man and his staff started to say, well, people do not leave home. How do we sell products? They started to sell online through the bulletin boards. Then he assigned one of his employees full time to take care of the internet. Just one person. At the end of the year, he looked at the numbers. Sales were not bad. They were making money from this internet sales, although he had only one person taking charge of that. He decided that e-commerce was the future. But the main point that made him decide to pursue e-commerce was when he was selling his products, computer components, offline, he decided that he had to be different if he wanted to be successful. So he started putting price labels on every product. And he declared as a policy to his customers that he would sell only real, genuine products, no counterfeits, no substandard products. The prices may be a bit higher, but you can be sure that if you buy your product from this shop, it would be genuine. It would never be counterfeit. Because at that time, most of the Chinese merchants selling products were either cheating or selling counterfeits. Cheating people, dirty money. 
He said he could sleep at night because he did not make any dirty money. That's when he decided that he would go into e-commerce. At that time, the fastest computer in his office belonged to the receptionist. So he took over that computer, turned it into the first server for JD.com. And that was when he was 29. He said that during the first four years, he slept only two hours every night. He was living, sleeping in the office. Why I the first girl is just try to make some money. Yeah. Buy the medicine for my grandmother. Mm. That was the only purpose. Yes. That very simple. Mm, very simple. That you want to make enough money to buy medicine for your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Then my family can get enough rice and some food. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, have nothing. Mm -hmm. Richard lives in Bangkok, which Suti Chai Yun. Bangkok, which Suti Chai Yun. Answering questions online from customers. But how could you sleep for two hours every night? You cannot. So he bought an old traditional alarm clock, put it on the wooden floor, and he slept there. The alarm clock, when it rang, was like an earthquake making sure that he would get up. So he put this alarm clock and woke him up every two hours. Then he started working, talking to customers, answering complaints. Went to sleep for a few hours, up again after two hours, and worked like that for four years. Fast forward, he turned 40. He took JD.com to NASDAQ in America, listed the company. He started with a very small amount of money, almost no money. But when he listed JD.com in NASDAQ, when he was 40, that was about three years ago, everything changed. The last time I checked, the market cap of JD.com is at least 57 billion US dollars. The rest is history. Today, we will talk about the present and the future with Richard Liu himself. Welcome, Richard Liu. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Richard Liu, founder and CEO of JD.com. I hope I was right in my facts about your life. Very right, definitely right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just uh, said that, like, uh, see a very big movie. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is a picture from yesterday. Yes. You met the prime minister. What did you tell him, and what did he tell you? Uh, I talked about uh, my company and our technology. How can I use my technology to help Thailand to develop the economy, mm -hmm. especially some small business? Yes. And uh, he talked more about the poor family, mm -hmm. uh, especially farmers. Mm -hmm. How can I help them to sell their uh, like food, fruits, mm -hmm. and uh, export to China? Mm -hmm. And the prime minister says he welcomes JD, he welcomes Richard Liu to come and help. Thai people, Thai business people, to find the Chinese market yes. as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
both from tourists. One way is our will buy the food from mm -hmm. the you know farmers directly. Mm -hmm. Another way to train them how to do the, like a cross border business by themselves. Mm -hmm. So they can open a shop on our JD platform mm -hmm. to sell the products not only to China but mm -hmm. the globally. Mm -hmm. So this is just the beginning. Yes. Uh, JD is coming to Thailand for the first time. And we can see a long future, a long sustainable relationship between Thailand and JD. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. We will start, I think, discussing numbers with Richard Liu will give us a clear picture of the timeline of his life and the main topics that we'd like to cover with Richard Liu. I will start with this number. So that's you, right? Only three years ago, at 40, you took JD to NASDAQ. Yes. Yes. Has that changed your life? How has that changed your life? Um, actually, it changed me nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't change me anything. You mean money doesn't change you? Just the, mon the number of money. Yes. yes. But uh, it's nothing related to my life, mm -hmm. my working, my family. No. Mm -hmm. no. So you still continue to work very hard. You still work in, uh, every day. You still push people around to uh, achieve targets set by you. Yeah. Everything is exactly the same as before. Mm -hmm. Nothing changed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, can I say yeah. another yeah. story? Yes. <laughs> Actually, my age is, uh, you know, like a... Uh, Top secret in my company. <laughs> Top secret in your company. <laughs> I, I'm very, How did I know that? I'm very few to talk about that because actually I am the oldest person in my company. Oldest? Richard, yeah, at oldest. 43, is the oldest person in his company. Yes. What is the average age of your employees? Our average is uh, only 26.3. 26.3. Yeah, so I feel very ashamed to, you know. To, you feel <laughs> to old? But, do yeah. you feel old when you walk into the office? I think I'm too old <laughs> compared with uh, our, my colleagues. This is a big, big change in China. I was there when I interviewed Richard, and I talked to the young people there in the office. Incredible. They are, as Richard said, 25, 26, 28 Anyone above 30 is very few. Very few people over 30. We used to say in my generation that any, you don't trust anyone over 30. Oh. I, can I trust you now? Yes, of course. <laughs> 2,000 US dollars. You remember what that figure means? When I began my business, that's uh, every dollar I have. Richard started his business with $2,000. Where do you get that from? I saved the dollars from when I worked at a Japanese company. Yes. For almost two years. Uh -huh. So I saved about two thousand US dollars. Mm -hmm. That's uh, all you had. All, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also have uh, another thing. That's a uh, very old traditional bicycle. Bicycle. <laughs> yeah. That's all you had. Yeah. Two thousand dollars and an old bicycle. Yeah. Uh -huh. I take the two thousand US dollars and I ride my old, uh, very old. Uh, uh, at least uh, older than me, uh, <laughs> bicycle. Your bicycle so, was older than you. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. So go to Zhongguanzhen, which is the IT mall in mm -hmm. Beijing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you really feel confident at that time? You had $2,000 and you went to start a business. Did you really feel that you could make it? You could make it successful? No, I, I didn't think so. Uh, I think for every entrepreneur on the beginning, you always feel so complicated, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know nothing for future for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I know I have a dream. Mm -hmm. I have a dream. The first dream I want to make some money to buy some medicine for my um, grandmother because my grandmother was sick at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, she has has to sleep on the bed mm -hmm. and uh, take the medicine every day. Yeah. But as a farmer. We have no cash to buy medicine for her, mm -hmm. so we have to sell every rice, everything we 
we own uh, uh, but still has no enough money mm -hmm. the medicine is so expensive was so expensive mm -hmm. at then uh, so why I start my company the first goal is just try to make some money yeah buy mm -hmm. the medicine for my grandmother mm. that was the only purpose yes that very simple mm, very simple that you want to make enough money to buy medicine for your grandmother mm -hmm. then my family can get enough rice get some food to eat mm -hmm. otherwise they will have nothing to eat mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that was not really w wanting to get rich or becoming a millionaire or anything no I don't know no such kind of dream no mm -hmm. but uh, several years later uh, and uh, after the first six years, yes, I already made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. uh, so my family can live uh, much better than before. Yes. So we know the company is not only can used to making money, mm -hmm. but also can do a lot of right things mm -hmm. for the whole society. Mm -hmm. Especially when I began my e-commerce business, I found this kind of business model can reduce the supply chain cost a lot mm -hmm. and also can improve the efficiency for the whole supply chain so it can bring more value for the industry and for the so, uh, society mm -hmm. yeah. from two thousand dollars when richard took jd.com to be listed on nasdaq the market cap is look at this number Is that right? What is uh, today's market cap of JD's stocks in I, NASDAQ? I don't know, really. <laughs> Every year, only on the last day of the year, which is uh, no, December 31st, yes. I will see our price, share price. You look at your share price only once a year? Once a year, yeah. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. But you have so many shareholders who would ask you every day why is the stock price down why is that doesn't it go up higher than this no yeah that's our shareholders jobs it's not my jobs <laughs> <laughs> they it's their concern not your concern mm -hmm. and uh, after IPO for the past three years I only saw uh, two investors two investors yeah only two uh -huh. and uh, it will be the first time I have a uh, investor meeting mm -hmm. in Hong Kong mm -hmm. about uh, ten days later I after see. our Q3 mm -hmm. release. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be my first time, but only about uh, twenty or thirty investors together. But in your shareholders meeting, you meet all the shareholders. You uh, you meet you meet them. You answer their questions. No, just uh, online, answer um, some questions. Oh, okay. It will be the first time for me to see them. You know, face. Face to face in yes. Hong Kong. Yeah, Hong Kong. Yes. Why Hong Kong? Uh, because our board meeting always in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. We list on Nasdaq. Mm -hmm. So our board meeting has to uh, launch abroad, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. Well, if the market cap is fifty-seven billion US dollars, what is your own worth now? Your personal worth? How how many shares do you hold in the company? Fifteen percent. 15 yeah 15 so percent of 53 billion US dollars how much is that uh, maybe eight billion US dollars something like that eight billion yeah. 10 billion some days so 11 yeah. billion some days maybe yeah and also you stick not. to your policy of no counterfeits no fake goods yeah. no substandard products how do yeah. you maintain that yeah we use a system, I don't know how to say in English, mm -hmm. challenge called Tema system. Mm -hmm. We will use the technology to defense all kinds of illegal things, mm -hmm. including fakes mm -hmm. and uh, brushing. You can detect fake yes. goods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Richard Liu, Bangkok, Rich Suti Chai Yun.
ริชาร์ดเลวส์แบงกอกวิชสุดที่ใช้ยุน Do you go to sleep every night thinking how much am I worth tonight? No. No, 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 no. no. It will make me so painful. <laughs> <laughs> Too stressed, huh? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why do that kind of thing? I mm -hmm. think uh, my job is lead my team to yeah. work for our customers, mm -hmm. partners. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So money doesn't really change your life, you said. Actually, money can change your life, mm. but most time it will change your life worse, not better. More money. More money, or worse, I think. Worse. For a lot of people, money is, is bad. More money is worse. No? It will depend on how you can control your money. Mm -hmm. In China, because China is just beginning richer versus before, mm -hmm. so when a lot of Chinese get a lot of money, mm -hmm. they don't know how they should use it to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they just uh, like uh, take the money, sleep with the money. No, working with the money, mm -hmm. eating with the money, <laughs> and travel with the money, everything for money, but the money is really cannot bring no any happiness to you. Money does not bring happiness. Yeah, if you So why do you make so much money? Uh it's I don't know how to say in English. You just uh, like uh, you have a dream, you yes. want to go that way. Mm -hmm. So when you achieve the target, mm -hmm. you will get a lot of things. Not only the money, like me, I also get over 150,000 uh, colleagues. Employees, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like uh, my brothers and mm -hmm. friends. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think it's more worth it than the money mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking at mon making money only, but you want to contribute to society. You want to make sure all your employees are happy. All the families of your employees are happy. Yes. And, and more important, you are going to contribute to the Chinese society in a big way in terms of innovation. Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, when I get my dream, I also get, um, get some money, get a lot of friends, a lot of partners, mm -hmm. a lot of colleagues, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, a lot of know-how. Too many. Mm -hmm. I got too many. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of things is more important than money itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. JD's operations are just incredible. Uh, look at the numbers that uh, are related somehow to the business. Next number will tell you. 600 million. 600 million fulfilled orders for just the second quarter. Is that right? I think uh, a lot of hard jobs. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the past uh, 13 years, we spend almost uh, every dollars and a time we own mm -hmm. to build uh, the whole logistic system in China, mm -hmm. uh, which can cover uh, over 99% of the total population. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the whole system is very efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that really needs innovation all the time to speed things up to improve efficiency in yes. fulfilling the orders. Yes. Mm -hmm. People will talk about sales. Annual sales. Every year, what is your sales figure? But in your business, you don't use the word sales. You use the word gross merchandise volume, right? Yes. GMV. What, how much is your GMV in the past year? In the, for the past, uh, yes, I think the 12 months, it's yes. uh, already mm -hmm. over 1 trillion RMB. 1 trillion renminbi, 1 trillion yuan. In terms of U.S. dollars? Last year, our GMV is uh, 140 uh, billion U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. This year, 2017, we will be uh, 200 billion U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One trillion yen bin 140 billion U.S. dollars one year. Is it the highest? In uh, e-commerce business in China, uh, no, actually it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, compared with our uh, competitor, mm -hmm. they are still quite small. Mm -hmm. But the difference is our GMA only come from the famous brands. Famous brands. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On my platform, we never sell any like a counterfeit, some low quality goods 
mm-hmm. or some white labels, some very cheap brands. No, we never sell that. Mm-hmm. We only cooperate with some famous brands. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. our uh, value of GMV is definitely different from uh, any other platform. Mm-hmm. And also, you still stick to your policy of no counterfeits, no fake goods, yeah. no substandard products. How do yeah. you maintain that? Uh, we use a system. I don't know how to say English. In mm-hmm. Chinese, we call it Tianma system. Mm-hmm. We use the technology to define all kinds of illegal things, mm-hmm. including fakes mm-hmm. and uh, brushing, you know. You can detect fake yes. goods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We use our technology and uh, some third party partners mm-hmm. to help us. Mm-hmm. Like uh, we have over 10 third party uh, companies. Every day they will buy some, uh, purchase some goods from our platform uh-huh. and, uh, you know, examine them, mm-hmm. real or not. Mm-hmm. To make mm-hmm. sure every SQ or every vendors on my platform uh, is real one. Mm-hmm. So you can always check. Yes. Whether every, day. Every, every day. Every day. Every day. Every item. I don't think so mm-hmm. because we have over one billion, almost one billion SQs. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Already. Mm-hmm. So we cannot. But we can. Every day, every mm-hmm. month, we will check every third party vendors mm-hmm. to make mm-hmm. sure this vendor is mm-hmm. trustable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And one more number will uh, really surprise us all. How many active users in the past 12 months? Past 12 months, how many active users that go on to your platform and yes. buy things and sell things? Yes. 250 million. Yes. And uh, most of them come from middle class today in China. Middle class. Yeah. For poor family, most of them are sellers. Mm-hmm. A lot of farmers sell the fresh foods, mm-hmm. uh, including fruits, a lot of things through our platform. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The number comes from ar- throughout China. This is all just Chinese people, right? Yes, only Chinese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only come from mainland. Mainland China. Yeah. What about users from other countries who Use your platform. We just uh, began our international business uh, from two years ago. The first destination we went to Indonesia, mm-hmm. and uh, today we come to Thailand. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also have some business model like a cross-border business model. It means we will send the goods from China mm-hmm. to US or Europe, but uh, it's just beginning. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Uh, very small business mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. So you're expanding overseas. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 But uh, from this year. We began to, how to say, uh, pay more attention mm-hmm. and uh, use more resources on our international business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the number of employees. What exactly is the number of your employees today? Today, for full-time jobs, we have over 150,000, and we also have over 1 million part-time jobs. 150,000 full-time, full-time employees yes. and w- uh, over, over 1 million, one million part-time, part-time, jobs. part-time jobs. Part-time jobs here m- means that they deliver your goods, they support the permanent staff. What do they do, the part-time people? From two parts. First part is come from the village. Village? Yeah. China, we have 600,000 villages. Mm-hmm. Uh, my company has covered uh, 480,000 village. In each village, we have a delivery man. But because of in that kind of village, the business is small, mm-hmm. so we don't need a full-time job. Also, the farmer will do a lot of things mm-hmm. for his time. Mm-hmm. So that kind of job is a part-time job. Mm-hmm. They only work fast, maybe only one hour or maximum two hours per day, but uh, still they can make uh, uh, some money. You said in 480,000 villages, Yes. in each of those villages, you have a delivery man of yes. JD. Yeah. This is a part-time job. Yes. Uh-huh. So it means we have already for over 400,000 part-time jobs. Wow. Mm-hmm. Another 
come from uh, Dada. Mm -hmm. Dada is a, a new business model. It's just like uh, Uber. Mm -hmm. Uber use a car to, you know, to take the people from A to B. Mm -hmm. But uh, for Dada, it will like uh, auto business model. Mm -hmm. uh, people will work part time for Dada to deliver some food uh, from the, for the restaurant or for the convenience stores mm -hmm. or some SMC, SMB, yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you cover almost 80% of the villages. Yes. JD. So you are everywhere. Yes. How do By people know whether this is a JD employee or not? Is it uniform? Is the Arab uh, our dilemma? They have our uh, apparel. Mm -hmm. Delivery man apparel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting. You mentioned to me that the difference between a delivery man from JD and a delivery man from some other companies is that people will allow. JD delivery man into the house. W yes. Why? What's the difference between your delivery man and the others? Uh, because I think two things. The first thing is we give our delivery man the best salary. Mm -hmm. uh, at least 50% uh, higher than the uh, average. 50% higher? Yes. Mm -hmm. At least 50%. Mm -hmm. Any delivery man who work uh, in my company for five years, they can make enough money to bo go back to their hometown mm -hmm. to buy a house. Mm -hmm. And then can bring their parents from the villages to the cities and uh, can let their kids get the, you know, Uber education. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the second is we use uh, some like a uh, sense of value, mm -hmm. culture, mm -hmm. to impact them. Mm -hmm. Once they live very well, and also they, they can get enough hope for mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because every three or five years, the salary increased, and uh, some of them will be a leader yeah. of the delivery station. Mm -hmm. So they have a very bright tomorrow. Mm -hmm. They care about the job very much. Mm -hmm. Don't want to lose them. Mm -hmm. Also, we have very strict rules for our delivery man. Any delivery man for one year, mm -hmm. if you get two complaints, from the customers, even the customer is not reasonable. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like a misunderstand, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Some complaint is not reasonable, but two complaints, you will get fired. Two complaints? Yeah. You will get fired. Get fired immediately. Mm -hmm. And I never, never hire you again. Wow. So that is tough because it means that you cannot make more than two mistakes. Or make the same mistake twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so those kind of management system can encourage our delivery to work uh, harder mm -hmm. and treat our customers uh, better mm -hmm. than any third party delivery company in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, every year I will be a delivery man. Every and year you become a delivery man yourself. Yeah, but not for recent two years because. Uh, Almost every customer can recognize me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know to yeah, be I cannot get the real information. <laughs> uh -huh. Not like before. All right. But every manager in my company, they have to be a delivery man. Uh -huh. They have to work for at least one day, full day. Full day to, to deliver, deliver that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and talk with our customers. Mm -hmm. Actually, today, almost 70% of our customers knew our delivery man. Okay. Know his name mm. or her mm. name. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, they, they, they trust each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like uh, the customer not uh, at home, mm -hmm. still work at the office, mm -hmm. they will call our dealer, please just uh, put the parcels on the side of the, uh, my gate. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of COD business still today in China, mm -hmm. it means that the dealer cannot, didn't get the money mm -hmm. from the customer. Mm -hmm. But uh, our dealer trust them. And still put the puzzle mm. on the gate of the customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next day or, or maybe several days later, and uh, go take the money. Back. So consumers know that you are very strict with your delivery man. Yes. Mm. That's why they trust JD. Yes. Mm -hmm. They are almost fans. fans. Almost fans, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. It's a fan club. Yeah. Right. But, but, but our senior manager, 
to look at the delivery man, mm -hmm. they, they said uh, almost half of the consumer will say, oh, come in, come in, take some drinks or something like that, or oh. get some rest. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They also very, I think, like our delivery man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can tell you another story. Mm -hmm. About uh, five years ago in Beijing, his, uh, how to say, um, a storm, mm -hmm. rainstorm. A big, big rainstorm. Yeah, very big rainstorm. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of, some people even died at that night. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that night, nearly every out the man, they go out, went out. Mm. Take the old people, they carry them back home, Whoa. lead them back home, mm -hmm. and uh, help the people fill the car in the water to mm -hmm. pull the car out. Oh. From the water, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot, a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. They saved a lot of old people mm -hmm. and the kids and the cars. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, uh, no any order. Mm -hmm. They didn't order them. No orders. Yeah, and uh, for recently, about three months ago, an earthquake happened in Sichuan province, mm -hmm. near to a very famous uh, place, mm -hmm. Jiu Zhai Gou. Mm. Jiu Zhai Gou. Yeah. Mm. In my company, we have a rule, if any disaster happened, mm -hmm. the nearest warehouse, the leader, must and had to uh, donate everything in the warehouse, mm -hmm. the disaster place needed. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. our rule. Mm -hmm. So, But for recently, uh, about uh, 1 a.m., mm -hmm. the earthquake happened. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. And every employee worked at that Warehouse, they came back to uh, warehouse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No any order. Mm -hmm. No one ordered you. You did yeah, not order. order them. They know what they should do. To do. Mm -hmm. They know they should do something to help people. Mm -hmm. So three hours later, over eight trucks already sent from that warehouse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the past uh, seven years, GD, my company, always the first company who can donate the goods in the some you know disaster place the first mm -hmm, get that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. always the first one so it has become a policy every time a disaster takes place jd people must be there to help yeah you can think about if the player can take care of the whole society mm -hmm. not only our customers not only my company they want to take care of the whole society they want to take care of the people they never know. Mm -hmm. If they can do that kind of jobs, they can do everything, the right thing for this company and for our customers. Mm -hmm. So that's our culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that is quite rare, quite unique, uh, in the sense that big businesses also make sure that they take care of society, especially in uh, natural disasters also. Mm -hmm. When we talk about JD, you look at big numbers. You look at 57 billions, you look at 150,000. But JD also has one number that is quite unique, and that is zero. Zero. What, is, what does zero mean in JD's term? Uh. Zero, Zero tolerance. Yeah, tolerance for, for counterfeits. counterfeits. Mm -hmm. Meaning that you will not put up with any counterfeit at all. No, never. N not all, Not only our one P business. They mm -hmm. also very strict on the three P business. Mm -hmm. If any third vendor tried to sell any counterfeits on my platform, my goal, our rule is, we will use every resources we own make sure that company will be bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it is very we, will, we will sue them. We will sue them. Yeah, we will sue them, continue mm -hmm. to sue them mm -hmm. until that company can bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Until it goes bankrupt. Yeah. If, if you try to put counterfeit products on JD's platforms, you'll be in real, in real trouble. Yeah, about two years ago, we found one. Mm. We found one in Hebei province, very close to Beijing. Mm -hmm. uh, we found it, and then we cooperated with the local government. 
the police station mm -hmm. and uh, close the office and the warehouse. Mm -hmm. Take, you know, every goods mm -hmm. as a like a confidence, mm -hmm. and then we sue them. Mm -hmm. So they have to pay a lot of money to our platform and to the brand owners. Wow. Okay. So mm -hmm. at last, that that company was bankrupt. Mm -hmm. Because that will send signals to other companies not to do this yes. to you. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. From zero, uh, one of the most uh, interesting or important uh, milestones for JD is the number 500. 500. JD is the first Chinese internet company to be on Fortune Global 500 list. When did that happen? Richard leaves Bangkok, which Su Ti Chai Yun. 